Hey you, what is up? How's it going? This is Kazi from cleverprogrammer.com. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about why coders or programmers burn out and how to avoid that in your life. This is something that can impact you in your career as a programmer. It could stop you from getting the job of your dreams. It could stop you from becoming the programmer that you wanna become and it destroys people's potential and career as a programmer. So with that said, and without any further ado, let's jump right into it. What is programmer burnout? What is, what is burnout in general? Well, burnout oftentimes, as Grant Cardone says, I was gonna say I say, but Grant Cardone says this, he says, you're not tired, you're uninspired. And burnout rarely ever happens because you're overworking because most people don't work that much and they don't actually push themselves to that limit. Most times burnout actually happens because people feel uninspired. They're either doing the same thing over and over again or they're constantly getting frustrated and hitting a roadblock and that's the one thing that they're getting stuck by. And so what happens when you keep getting stuck? Well, eventually you will give up, you will get uninspired and you will not want to move on. So the one thing that can help you really break past any of these barriers and get, uh, virtually guarantee that you're never gonna have a burnout is by setting really tiny little goals along the way to where you're trying to get to. Oftentimes I'll see some new programmers coming in and they're like, you know, I wanna build the next Facebook. I wanna build the next Instagram. I have this crazy idea. Too big of an ask, too big of a task. And when they start, obviously they can't build it. They're not ready. Oftentimes they give up, they're burnt out. Now, for other people, the burnout happens even if you're, uh, even if you're past a beginner, right? You're coding, you're building projects, but then eventually you forget what your goal is, what you're doing, and you kind of quit or give up. So how does it work for me? For example, I'm gonna be competing in a powerlifting competition in May, May 25th is gonna be my first powerlifting competition. To get to that, I'm trying to make sure that I keep hitting every day, I increase my weight by two and a half pounds, five pounds, because I'm still in like the beginner phase so I can keep making those gains. And I have very systematic step-by-step -step things that cause me to win every day. So when we bring it back to programming, you need to set up these small incremental goals where you're winning every single day. So let's say your job, you're, you do want to build an Instagram clone or you do want to build the next Facebook. Well, you gotta break it down. What does, a face, what does Facebook have? Well, you know, I've talked about these topics before, but I think it's really good to reiterate because as humans, we need reminders, all right? Like, no, why do we keep looking up how to stop procrastinating? Because all we need is reminders. Why do we need motivation? Just to be reminded and get back in that zone again. Okay, so this is why I keep reiterating this so much, but okay, so let's say we wanna build Facebook. Now, you have to break Facebook down into its component parts. It's not just Facebook and boom, that's it, all right? That's not actually what it is, right? When you're working on Facebook, you need, what is Facebook made of? Well, we have login functionality, so that's one. We have log out functionality. What else do we have? Do we have the ability to make a post? Yes, so we can create posts. We have a database that can store all the posts. So when you create them and you log back into your account, all your posts are saved somewhere. It's kind of like a massive Excel spreadsheet. So we need a database. All right, what else do we need after a database? Well, we need to have a way, we need to actually show this and make this look nice. So we need to know HTML plus CSS, if we're trying to make a clone of it, okay? We're not gonna be copying all of the technologies they're using. Let's say we're trying to build this with Python. So what are, what are we gonna need? Well, we need HTML and CSS to make Facebook look nice, make it look pretty, okay? What else do we need besides HTML and CSS? Well, we need to know Django, so we can actually have something that speaks between all this pretty crap and the database, okay? So Django just allows you, in simple terms, allows you to do that, okay? It allows you to speak between these two. Okay, we got Django, and we will also need a, maybe a few other technologies, but let's just stop here for the sake of simplicity and not turning this into a technical exactly how do we make Facebook, but more so 
what is the general idea? What's the message that I'm trying to get across here? So when you're learning stuff, one of your goals is to figure out how do you build a log in, logging in functionality, all right? Oh, uh, we also have to upload this online, right? Somewhere, so maybe you need to know a technology like Heroku, all right? Okay, or DigitalOcean, something where you can actually host this website online. Now, you need to know login functionality. That's kind of the first thing you need to know. So I would start working on how does login functionality work? Or maybe I'll start with, let me learn HTML, CSS, so then I can make a website look pretty. So then when I build my Facebook clone, I can make it look beautiful. And you learn each technology as you go and you implement it, all right? So this is how I learned. So let's say I wanted to build a Facebook clone. When I learned the login functionality at some point, I went ahead in my app and I added this functionality. Okay, then when I learned the logout functionality, I went and added it to my app. Then when I learned the create post functionality, I added it to my app and I would keep doing this. And because I didn't know Heroku at the time and I didn't know how online stuff worked, I just used a module like Tkinter in Python, which basically allows you to make graphical user interfaces. So um, it stands for GUI, GUI. And when it allows me to make graphical user interfaces, well, this just allows me to do it locally. That's the cool thing about Tkinter. So I don't have to learn about all this crap about how do you post a thing online. I didn't have to learn about Django at that point. I don't have to learn about HTML, CSS. I don't have to learn about databases. So basically, it, it makes it simple for me to learn without adding too many complications. So first, I just learned GUI, I learned there was a Tkinter module, I built a login functionality with a Tkinter module. I built a log out functionality with a Tkinter module. I built the create post functionality with that module. And then when I needed to take it online and I was kind of stuck and I needed to know these things, that's when I started actually learning about these things. Another big secret I will give you so you are not stuck on really, really stupid things and just smashing your head against the wall constantly and not making any progress. Because in coding, sometimes you get stuck with the dumbest errors. A lot of people will know if they, if you've ever tried to post something up online using Heroku, you'll run into these stupid 500 internal service uh, errors that don't help you at all improve your coding skills. You'll not know what it is. It'll turn out to be some small little bug and it will take you about, let's say, one week to figure out with five to eight hours a day of debugging. Very, very painful and a total waste of your time. So one secret I'll give you are coaches. I can't write this down here. So what do you do? What would I do here? I would go to codementor.io, which is an online platform where there are mentors. You pay them, they help you. They're live. It's almost like going to a pizza shop. You ask for a pizza, they give you pizza. You need help with code, they help you with code right away. And I used to have a mentor and her name is Jessamine. She is an absolute killer, badass. She's usually always booked. So I don't know if you're gonna get her or not, but if you are going from this video, message her that I sent you. She's not gonna give you a good deal. She might, but uh, she will definitely think that I'm awesome for doing that. But yeah, please let her know she'll love that, knowing that you're coming from me and she'll probably prioritize you higher, I don't know. But she's super awesome and she helped me a lot when I, would, when I used to get stuck with my coding problems. And what would happen is like, she'll just tell me right away what's the best resource and in what order should I go to add this database to my Tkinter app. Okay, so for example, she might just tell me, hey, right now, don't add too much complication of adding online functionality just build a local database using like an Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file. And with your graphical user interface, that'll work. Then later she might tell me, okay, now it's time for you to learn HTML and CSS. And she would just guide me on the right track and save me countless hours on stupid errors, not intelligent errors, not the errors where when you debug them, you increase your skill. I'm talking about you lose your brain cells <laughs> debugging some of these problems, okay? So those are the bad problems to debug that I'm talking about. And you know, this woman has saved me years of my life 
There are some other mentors that I hired from Code Mentor as well that helped me a lot, but she was definitely my favorite. Just to wrap it up, how do you avoid coders or programmers burnout? You one, have a big goal, and two, you, you break that goal down into small component parts, and then you learn those parts, okay? Three, you apply each of those things that you're learning to one of your projects and your apps. This way, you are implementing and taking action as you go. And the fourth secret that I gave you is if you have a mentor, when you're stuck, you can literally go to a platform called codementor.io. They're coders on demand. They can just help you right away and then you can move on with your life. Okay, if you can't afford somebody who's charging higher prices like 30 or $60 an hour, look for somebody who's charging $10 or $15 an hour. And if even that's tough, message them and say, hey, can we work something out? That's the message for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and give this a little thumbs up. Really helps the channel. We're trying to make this, we're trying to grow this channel massively and we're trying to create like one video a day for you guys, if not two, that's our goal. But the way we can do that is if you support this channel and the super easiest way for you to support this channel is honestly just giving it a thumbs up, then YouTube will put it in front of more people. The more people that view it, the more people will come into the Clever Programmer community and uh, you're gonna keep getting tons of more videos. And all we need from you is just a little thumbs up. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is Kazi and as always, I love your face and I'll see you in the next video. Going all day, man.